One of the most common uh, complaints that we hear here in the gym or in the corporate setting uh, is lower back pain. Lower back pain is currently uh, in excess of $2 billion problem a year for the United States, and it's mainly due to lifestyle. So uh, one of the biggest, most common mechanisms that we'll see that causes this back pain or disc degeneration is something called an anterior pelvic tilt or excessive lordosis. Uh, this pattern looks like this out in the real world where the pelvis uh, has these front uh, landmarks right here called your ASIS that are tilted forward like so. And this uh, pattern presents itself in multiple ways. We have the uh, pelvis tilting forward. We also usually have a pelvis shift forward with a slouch rib cage. And this can be the mechanism for lower back pain, upper back pain, neck pain, migraines, bad shoulders, bad hips, bad knees, you name it. Uh, so one of the things that we fix, or one of the things that we aim to do here is fix that postural compensation or move it more towards neutral in a consistent state. Now, why do we develop these problems? And uh, that answer is kind of multifaceted. Uh, first and foremost, there are multiple components that hold this pattern together. Uh, one is very short hip flexors, and we usually get those short hip flexors from sitting down throughout the day, uh, you know, and just the generation of people that uh, work more inside the cubicle than they do outdoors you're going to typically see more short hip flexors associated uh, with that. And we know that because if we get up out of a car after a long drive, you might feel like it's really hard to get all the way into a standing position. Uh, secondly, uh, the footwear that we put ourselves into from the time that we're little kids all the way up to when we're adults and the amount of basically discrepancy between the toe and the heel, so usually there's some elevated heel, and this kind of idea that there's a one-size-fits-all shoe model out there that really compresses our shoes uh, and really uh, kind of decreases the surface area our feet have to work with to create postural stability upstream from that. So normally what happens is, uh, with kind of like a, a base that's kind of less stable here with our feet, we develop these things called gripping patterns, and part of that gripping pattern is the, uh, the hip flexors and the lower back muscle shortening up and creating this anterior tilt to kind of redistribute weight uh, forward and backward to uh, create a center point for center of mass. Uh, so no matter how you arrive at this problem, there's always some things that you can do at home that can make big differences without having to spend a bunch of money to go see a physio or a chiropractor that can address some of the tissues that are holding this pattern. So what we're going to use today is a lacrosse ball. You can use a baseball or a tennis ball. You pr uh, we prefer something a little bit denser though. So this lacrosse ball really serves the purpose of the baseball probably a little bit more than the tennis ball. As you progress through this though, you can use something a little bit larger like a softball that will enable you to kind of get in there a little bit deeper. Uh, so what I'm going to do is set up on the wall for this. By putting my feet up on the wall, I'm going to take myself out of a little bit of that anterior tilt, so I should be able to kind of put my pelvis into a more neutral position, and that's also going to enable me to get a little bit deeper into this muscle, the quadratus lumborum. All right, so I have my uh, legs set up right here, set my knees at 90 degrees, and I move myself a little bit closer right here. Again, what I'm doing is taking my pelvis a little bit out of that anterior tilt by putting my knees up here like so. So the muscle I'm going to be working on you can see I have my vertebral column right here and my side right here. There's a big strapping muscle that connects your rib cage down to your pelvis right here called your quadratus lumborum. We're going to work on that today. So I'm going to take this ball and place it right into the center of that muscle and lie on back. And what you should feel is this kind of uh, dull, achy kind of pain right here uh, if your quadratus lumborum is really tight. Uh, if you feel that, that's fine. That's kind of what we're going for here. Uh, we got to enable ourselves to breathe through this and relax because if we're really tense, what's going to happen is we're not going to actually get to work on the tissue. So what we want to do is imagine our tissues are like dough and we want to knead the dough. So in order to relax, I'm going to think of inhaling through my nose deeply down into my belly and then letting it go. And as I do this, this ball sinks a little bit deeper and deeper. Now it's important to point out, you might feel as you expand into the ball a little bit of a stretch. That's because your diaphragm shares common attachments with your hip flexors and your quadratus lumborum. And those things all kind of interplay together to hold a postural compensation, meaning that when you're in a really heavy anterior tilt, you're probably not breathing as efficiently as well. So we're just gonna breathe through this. 
And then what I'm going to do to get into the muscle a little bit deeper, I'm going to turn my foot out here to a 45 degree angle and follow with the other foot. And by doing so, I'm able to get in obliquely to the muscle, meaning we're getting in from the side. Uh, this is just kind of an easier way to get into some of the gnarlier spots of that muscle. So what we're going to do again is breathe right here and then let it go. And just relax into the ball. By relaxing into the ball, it enables me to actually work on these tissues. So the first motion that we're going to do is just kind of rocking back and forth at the knees. I like to imagine that a gentle breeze is just kind of blowing through here and blowing my knees back and forth. And that little motion right here just does some work to the fascia and to the tissue that's stiff right here on my QL. So what I'm going to do is try to kind of pull these hips on up into a little bit of posterior tilt. This little gyration action right here really enables me to lengthen the tissues around where the ball is applying pressure. And by doing so, I can really make a change in the length of all the tissues uh, surrounding this pressure point right here. So after I get done doing that, I can take the ball out, and I always want to finish any time we do any soft tissue, we always want to finish with a little corrective exercise to realign things, right? If we just work on the tissues and don't do anything to allow our nervous system to acclimate to these new potential ranges that we have, we might not ever make a permanent sustainable change. So, when I'm in an anterior tilt, I'm chronically pulling at my hamstrings, which inhibits them from firing, particularly up here in the top regions of it, because they're chronically being pulled and they stiffen in response. So what I'm gonna do is teach my hamstrings to shorten up, particularly in these higher pieces right here. It's important throughout this entire exercise that we make sure the abs don't assist us. So turn off your abs, put your hands here, just to make sure that your abs aren't kicking on the whole time. So what I want to do is put my heels on the wall right here, make sure I'm at 90, and pull through my heels, keeping my abs turned off, until my hamstrings pull me into that posterior tilt. Now notice I'm trying to kind of tuck up under right here without using my abs. It's very challenging. Just go to a comfortable range right here, and you'll know when your hamstrings are kind of out of range of motion right here. So when I'm in that range, what I want to do is breathe, and then let it go. Breathe, and let it go. And I want to hold this for about 30 seconds to a minute, really as long as you can handle it, uh, until you feel kind of fatigued in your hamstrings. What I want to do then is slowly come down, drop the knees off to the side, roll up to all fours, and you should feel much looser in your lower back. Try this daily. If you sit at a desk, this is a great thing. It takes about three minutes that can really reduce a lot of your pain.